but I think this will be the longest topic that we hit on. Uh, Bruce Arians decided to step down as the head coach of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He is going to move into a front office role, and Todd Bowles takes over as the new head coach. Now, the first part of this is there's not a lot of NFL uh, franchises that would not go through a hiring process, right? Like, it, it, normally you have the head coach steps down, they go through and figure out exactly what they want in a candidate, and then, uh, so it, it, it appears that this was somewhat premeditated, right? This looks like it had been in the works for quite some time. I've got a lot of questions, uh, and I'm hoping that maybe you've got some opinions on it. Uh, first, yeah. all right, so, so there were several different uh, social media posts talking about, hey, you know, there was talk about maybe Arians and Tom Brady not getting along a lot last year. Do we think that that had anything to do with this? So let's go with that one first. You feel like there was anything going on with Brady and Arians? No, I joked. I joked around yesterday in our group chat, being like, you know, well, hey, you, know, did you talk a little shit about the king, and the king takes you out because uh, <laughs> Bruce, Bruce, I, what I love so much about him is he does not hold back anything. Um, I, I think the things that he spoke about, you know, you know, them not waiting for Tom, and them not, you know, you know, if he's not here, we're going to move on without him. Like, like that's what are you supposed to say? Like, yeah. how are you supposed to run an organization? Um, and, uh, and, and, and all this stuff. Uh, so I don't, I don't think, I don't think him and Tom had any negative relationship at all. Uh, I think when they got into it, it was two guys being competitive and both of them felt like they had the best way to win a ball game. Um, and they both seen a lot and had been in the league for a long time and, and, and things like that get heated. And, and I get that. That's, that's all about going in the same direction to make us win, to make us better. And at the end of the day, I think they both have the same philosophy, which is, I don't care who's right. I just want to win. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm with you. So, so, so I don't, so I don't think that had anything to do with it at all. This, I'll tell you where this comes from. Bruce Arians is one of the only coaches I have ever seen in the history of the game that, that is able to find success at the level he is and not be completely engulfed in football. You read about these coaches oh, that yeah. go in at 4 a.m. and they don't leave the facility until midnight and or they just sleep there during certain times and, and all of this stuff. And that's not just a few guys. That's more than not, okay? Out of the 32, far more of them are the, that way than Bruce Arians' way. And Bruce Arians, I mean, he used to have a rule. He used to say all the time that, that if he caught you in the building after 8 o'clock, your kid had like a sporting event, like a ball game or something, that he would throw you out of the building and he would threaten to fire you. Because yeah. because family is more important than this. Bruce is a guy that just has never been, I'm gonna work a hundred hours a week and, and that's gonna be our trick to beat people. That's yeah, never his, been his trick his was, thing. was relax, right? Yeah. Like a yeah, mental it really, capacity. It really like, was. There's only so much that you can fit into your brain. There's only so many workouts that you can get in, like it. And I like what he was doing with it. Uh, tell me this: is well, uh, is Tom Brady? I'll tell you this. Go ahead. Hang on. You can say you liked what he was doing with it, but if but if he was four and ten or whatever, you know, however many games they play, like you don't get to do that. Okay. Oh, agreed. Agreed. You got to be smart and you got to be able to to win. Your method has to work in order for uh, for people to be okay with it, right? And right. and there's not. I mean, it's very difficult to be successful in this league, but he is an incredibly smart coach and a good leader. So uh, let's let's move on to this question: Will Tom Brady play for Todd Bowles? Like, do you think Brady oh, yeah. was coming back to play for Bruce, or uh, no? Brady's that, coming back to play for himself. That's and, what I think. And that team. I mean, like, like not, I mean, I know it sounds selfish. Brady knows that team. Brady knows the offense. Uh, the offense is now firmly in the hands of. Uh, Byron, I think him and Byron had a great relationship, and and also I think Brady kind of gets the audible and call whatever he wants. Oh yeah, and that was the same with Bruce there. That won't change. Um, I don't think Brady will have more leniency now than he did before. He he's seen more defenses than Byron and Bruce, so he knows what he's doing. No, no, you're 100 um, right. Hundred percent. And so so I don't think I don't think that had has any d- deciding ability. 
I do, and I said this way after he the second he retired, I said I, I don't believe it because I, I thought I thought he was going to come back and, and try to play. I think he wanted to play for San Francisco. I think he wanted to end his career where he fell in love with the game. He doesn't have that luxury. He's the kind of guy who's all in or all out. He's all in. He's not leaving Tampa. People are talking about trade rumor. He's trying to get traded to the Dolphins because they've loaded up. That's all horse shit. He, he, that, is, that has never been Tom Brady's MO. Does he want the most talent he can? Yes. Does he want to win? Absolutely. But the, the minute he made his decision, he's coming back, and Tampa Bay wasn't trading him, he is all in with those guys. And that mentality, when it clicks, it never turns off until the season's over with. Yeah. No, no, you I think you're right. I think you're right. Uh, now, I've got two questions that kind of tie in together. We'll move back to Bruce as opposed to talking about Tom Brady. But let's start off with this one. Did Bruce step down so that a black head coach could take over a strong team? You and I have talked ad nauseum about the fact that uh, the black coaches in the NFL do not get the best opportunities and thus are tossed out after a year or two when they can't get it turned around, when they don't get enough support. In this situation, you've got a team that, that was a Super Bowl contender that, yeah, you're going to have to replace a couple of pieces. But for the most part, like, this thing is is set up. Like, I, I think this is as good of an opportunity uh, that Todd Bowles would have ever gotten. So, I, I, don't, I, don't, think, I don't think the, the black-white thing comes into play for Bruce at all. I do think he's going to stay on as a front office guy. He's going to continue to work with the team. And, and be a part of this organization. And I think I think if they had any level of success at all this year, let's say they make the playoffs, let's say they make it to the NFC title game, and that's as far as they make it. I don't think there's any chance on earth next year that, that Todd Bowles and Byron are still there. And so if you're, if you're an organization, and Bruce is part of the organization, and you're thinking about retiring soon, and you're thinking you might not be all in on this season. If you if you don't give one of them the job today, there's a really good chance tomorrow you don't get the chance to. There's That's a really a good, good job opportunity that somebody's going to pluck them away. A, they they are two of the minority coaches in the league, and they're both really good and on that trajectory to get a head coaching job. So you can either let somebody hire your guy or you can hire your guy. And yes. and I think Bruce is smart enough to realize this. I don't think it has anything to do with the fact that we have two hot minority candidates and this is a good job for them. I, I think it's the best thing for Tampa Bay for one of these two gentlemen to have the job. And they went with the one with the most head coaching experience. I am curious to see who they bring in as a D.C. this late in the game. Um, are they just going to try to promote somebody up? You know, Bill Belichick has tried doing that for years. Okay, like I, you can't, you can't name since Matt Patricia left. You can't name the DC. Like everyone assumed Brian Flores was the DC, and he yeah, he was, but he was never given that title. Like yeah. that does. I don't think that stuff works. I think you need to bring somebody in now that you're the head coach to run the defense, and you can oversee that. And you can have a lot more hands in on that, but football is too important for one person to run a whole side of the ball and try to compete for championships. I think you need to you need to make sure somebody is responsible for that gig, and and I have no idea if they've got somebody in house that they're just going to promote up. Will that work out the best for them? I don't know. I, I do um, think hiring in somebody from outside allows Todd to. Uh, place his, his own stamp on this thing well, as opposed right. to him he just running one Bruce's team. But if, they, but if they promote from within, I'm going to assure you this, Todd Bowles hired 100% of the defensive staff. Bruce Harris didn't hire. Yeah, you Bruce probably. Harris probably interviewed them, <laughs> and he had a say in it. But, but Todd Bowles hired his linebackers coach. Todd yeah, Bowles yeah. hired his, his, his DBs coach. Like, Todd Bowles hired his defensive staff. Well, this is like okay. Brent Venables at, uh, at Clemson. Like, he was the head coach of the That's defense. Right. Like, he was the head coach of the defense, and every coach that coached on the defensive side of the ball, he hired. He hired. Dabo had to give a blessing to, but that was a look across the aisle and say, this is the guy I want. Dabo said it's blessed, and we move on. Yeah. Yeah. 
I don't think you're wrong. The the last part of this, and again, this question kind of ties into that. Uh, do we think that he would have uh, decided to retire or move to the front office if Tom Brady had not unretired? Uh, yeah, I still think he would have done it because I don't think this is a Tom Brady's here. I don't think this is a we can win now. I don't think any of that has anything to do with it for Bruce. I think Bruce really enjoys the life that he has. I think this is 100%. I am spending time with my family. I am doing a lot of fun stuff. And right now we're getting into the time where I got to go back to work. And these workups all the way up until we start football are, are brutal and they're long days. And I think Bruce has said, I'm, I'd really like to just keep doing what I'm doing. Being out on this lake right now with my family is a lot of fun. And uh, I, definitely I think sense. I'm good with that. Now you, you can enjoy yourself quite a bit in, uh, in Tampa, for sure. Well, he got his, he got his ring, which is the most important thing. Yes. You know, he, he was one of those coaches that I think had such an unbelievable career without a title. And, and he, he was able to get his ring. And so, you know, stepping and, down yeah, is this a point, lot easier now. Yeah, what's he got to prove? It's, it's yeah. kind of like Andy Reid. I'm kind of surprised that Andy Reid has not uh, has not stepped aside yet. But you know, alas, it is what it is. And I mean, some of these guys love doing what they're doing. Yeah. And Andy Reid, as you know, he, he's a, he's a big old boy. But Andy Reid doesn't have near the health problems that Bruce Arians has. Oh, you're Bruce right. Bruce Arians has battled cancer. Bruce Arians has battled all kinds of stuff. Like this ain't his first rodeo with retiring. And once you retire, it, I think it gets easier and easier to kind of say, "I'm just going to walk away." Yeah, no, you're you're not wrong. He's already been down that road once. Uh, people have been talking about Bill Cowher coming back to the NFL forever, and he never did. Well, they're insane, and they, and he never did. He never yeah. did. Why? Because it's really hard to get motivated. I think so. I'm not a super competitive person. I have to assume. So I'm making an assumption about a type of people that I don't know a whole lot about. Um, that, or not that I don't know. I don't. I can't relate to. Let's say that. Right. Right. Uh, I think. To be that competitive at that kind of level for so long, and then the ease that you get of stopping that, the relaxation on your brain and your body that you get from from being out of that for a while, I don't know how you get back off the couch and just turn that back on, just turn that animal instinct back on. Now, some guys never lose. I mean, there are historical conversations between John Smoltz and Greg Maddox, how those two guys are, you know, 60 years old, can't go fisting together because <laughs> it turns into a fist fight. Like, like I, and that, that's just, that just might be in their gene. And, and they never, and maybe everybody who's ultra competitive never really loses that. I don't know. I can't relate to it, so I don't understand it. But Bill Cowher seems like he was so relaxed in that booth on TV working a couple of days a week, you know, and, and that's it. And just to say, all right, now I got to instantly not just ignite a fire, but the fire you got to have to be a head coach in the NFL has to be flaming hot. Oh yeah, and and you got to go from couch to that heat. I don't, I don't know how you do that. I don't either. I, I really don't. It's, uh, I mean, it's difficult. It's difficult to do it, and and I don't imagine that we will see Bruce back on a sideline again uh, ever. Like I think I think this is it. This is the the final agree. part. I think I think this is it. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at Gary WCE at Chris B G and any at Winning Cures, or you can email us Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.